AI co-pilots, AI coding assistants, and AI software engineers. What's the difference? What are the capabilities? And what tools should you, the engineer, be focusing on to write high quality code at insane rates? We are in the age of generative AI. And if you don't want to get left behind while your peers supercharge their productivity with the current and next generation AI coding tools, you need to be paying attention to these three categories of tools. This is a full breakdown. Let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is differentiate the these tools. At each level, we increase the complexity and the AI autonomy of the tool. So at the bottom level, we have our AI co-pilots, also known as AI autocompletes. At the second level, we have AI coding assistants. AI coding assistants are a superset of the capabilities of AI co-pilot. So everything that you can do with an AI co-pilot, your AI coding assistant can do or doesn't need to do because it has superior capabilities. When we go one level higher to the top, we have AI software engineers. You've heard of these, but this is how you can break down the relationship between all of these tools. At the bottom, we have co-pilots, then we have AI coding assistants, and then we have AI software engineers. So let's look at some specific tool examples, right? You've likely heard or used one or many of these tools, right? So these are AI coding tools. GitHub Copilot, we have Super Maven, and then we have Cursor's Copilot Plus Plus. At the next level, we have our AI coding assistants. These are tools like Cursor, Aider, and Continue. And then at the highest level, we have our AI software engineers, Devin here, we have Open Devin, and we have Copilot Workspace. We need to be moving our technology stack into the future by using tools powered by LLM technology. Here's one more way to look at this. At each level, we increase AI autonomy and we decrease the amount of work and effort we need to do as the engineers to generate value, to generate value with software. So at the bottom level, we have our tier one. These are our AI co-pilots. They boost our productivity by a ton, not as much as the next tier, right? Tier two, we have our AI coding assistants. The capabilities in our AI coding assistants supersedes the co-pilots by a massive multiplier. And we'll look at why in just a second by digging into the key capabilities and features of AI coding assistance. But then at the highest level, we of course have our AI engineers. When these really get to market and get to scale and are usable and affordable, they will essentially replace all of the capabilities of coding assistants and co-pilots, effectively making them obsolete as they improve. I think the right way to utilize these tools is when you need to dive deeper, you remove the highest layer, right? So there's going to be a lot of boilerplate work that your AI engineer can do for you. But when you need to dive in and get some more detailed coding work done, you'll use your coding assistant. And same thing right now, right? If you're using coding assistants a lot right now, it's not like you're not using tab AI auto completion with your copilot. It's just that you're likely doing it less and you're not relying on it so much because the AI coding assistant can do so much of what the copilot can do. I want to be super clear here. There are levels and kind of sub tiers in between these tools. This is just a great way to break down and differentiate copilots versus coding assistants versus full-on AI engineers, right? There are levels in between. I'm sure you can point out examples that don't quite fit these categories. This is just a good way to break it down, to add clarity to your tooling so that you can know what you need to grab and so that you can know what type of technology is emerging in each one of these categories. So these are our three tiers. Let's go ahead and dive into specific examples of what these look like. So let's break down some of these features, right? So let's start with AI co-pilots. AI co-pilots have two key features, really one key feature. They have AI autocomplete. Let's dive back into the code base we were working on in the previous video. Feel free to check that out. We went into more details on AI code prompting. You can think of this video as a part two. We're gonna talk more about the high level capabilities of each one of these tools. So let's start with the AI autocomplete. Most of us started out in GitHub Copilot and then we migrated to something a little more advanced. I am using Cursor's Copilot++. Let's go ahead and create an add many resource function. Okay, so I'm just gonna start typing add many resources and as you can see, it's auto-completing the rest of the capabilities for me. Comment autocomplete. This is very similar, but what we do is we trigger the functionality we wanna write by writing what is effectively a comment prompt. So I'll go ahead and type another prompt here. I'll say modify resource. Hit enter here and I'll just type E. Copilot will come in, autocomplete the functionality for us and I'll just hit tab. That's exactly what we want. We're passing in an ID and a new link and this will modify an existing resource by matching it by ID. That's the power of AI Copilots, also known as AI Autocompletes, right? So really powerful stuff there. 
let's go ahead and check that off and move on to the most important AI coding tool right now, the AI coding assistant. In this category, we have cursor, we have Ader, we have continue. Definitely check out the previous video. We went into more in depth into examples of how to prompt. We basically built this entire code base with a few prompts. Let's start with the selection prompt. So we're going to highlight a block of code. We're gonna command K here, add IDs as second param. I'm gonna hit enter and it's going to infer the change I want there. So instead of just passing in our links, which is just a list of strings. We're also gonna pass in our IDs and make sure that the ID doesn't already exist. We'll push our resources and then we'll go ahead and write them. So this is one of the key features of AI Coding Assistance. It gives you a lot more control and power versus just auto-completing with the surrounding context that AI co-pilots have, right? So this is really powerful. Let's look at the selection prompt with context. So this is really cool. Let's actually go ahead and modify our readme. And what I'm gonna do here is we have our CLI application. Again, we built this out in the previous video. It has four or five CLI commands. I wanna create some usage documentation in the readme. So I'm gonna prompt this. I'm not gonna do this myself because why would I waste that time? I'll start a new selection prompt on line three. I'll hit at, and then I'll reference my index.ts file. So now I have the context of this file inside this prompt. And then I'll explicitly say, I'm gonna ask for some markdown. I want a how to use, and that's it. I'm just gonna hit enter. I'm giving it a header and a context file, and it's going to know that it's in a readme and it probably wants usage documentation. You can see it's auto-completing all of the existing functions and from the index.ts file. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a follow-up instruction. We are using bun, so I just wanna say use bun as a follow-up, and it will now go in and use bond syntax and reference the .ts files. Perfect. This is great, right? Now we have documentation. We just ran one prompt and we gave it some context. Really powerful feature of a coding assistance. Let's go ahead and check this one off. And let's look at the terminal prompt. And what we're actually gonna do here is we'll look at the terminal prompt with context, right? We'll just continue building off the work that we just did. Let's open up the terminal. Inside the terminal, we'll hit command K. And now we have a prompt inside the terminal. And what I'll do is I'll say, how do I add a resource? And then I'll reference a readme file, which now has our documentation on how exactly to um, you know, add, modify, and remove based on our index.ts file, right? So I'll just hit enter here and it will generate the command for me automatically, right? So it has this written perfectly. I'll just hit run and you can see there it ran that code. It added the resource with ID5. If we go ahead and crank open our AI resources, you can see that file has been added. So this is awesome, right? We were able to create documentation using AI coding. We were able to hop in the terminal and just ask, how do we do something, right? How do we do this? It can help you remember arbitrary bash commands or git commands. We also have two chat prompts. I'm gonna go ahead and add with context here. Looks like that was just missing. So we looked at file prompting and multi-file prompting in our previous video. I'm gonna go ahead and defer you to that. I'm gonna link that in the description where we ran an entire file and multi-file prompt using Ader. I'm gonna say in cursor in this video and just kind of run through the high level of these key features. So the file prompt is effectively a selection prompt of the entire file. And then of course the multi-file prompt would be a selection prompt of multiple files, right? In cursor, you can't do that. In Ada, you can. Let's talk about the chat prompt. This is really important. So in cursor and in continue, and I think even GitHub Copilot has this, where you can chat with a model with context of your code base, right? So let's just go ahead and ask. We have the readme open right now. I'll just say how to delete resource, right? We can see here, it gave us a clear example. You replace it with exactly what you were looking for. I'll just go ahead and highlight this and run this. I'll delete item one. You can see resource one deleted. That was the correct command. And if we look at our AI resources, we have no ID one anymore, right? So that worked great. Let's go ahead and run something a little more intense. I'll create a new chat with some context, right? And what I'll do here is I'll use this really incredible feature. You can hold command and hit enter and it'll use the context of your entire code base. So I'm just gonna ask at a high level, how does this work? If you're an engineer who works on three or more code bases on a weekly basis, Having the ability to use code base QA, question answer, uh, is especially useful when you're jumping back into code bases and you just need a quick refresher on how things work. All I'm gonna type here is, how does this code base work? Where should I start, right? Just something like that, right? And I'll hit command enter this time and you can see here it's reading multiple files and you can see exactly what, it's, what, what, what it does, right? So it's gonna give us a nice breakdown. It's telling us the main kind of high level components, the main functionality, index, crud, crud test, telling us the starting point. And then it's probably gonna give us a command here. Let's go ahead and see if we can get something. Yep, nice, so we're gonna get some commands, which is awesome to see. 
Uh, looks like the formatting got a little weird here, but this still looks great, right? Again, if you have clients that you work with and you're just hopping around between multiple projects, this is so useful for just re-downloading the code base back into your personal RAM, your mental memory. So that's the chat prompt and that's the code base question answer. The chat prompt with context is basically the same thing as code base question answer. You can you know, refer to a specific file. So I can say, do we have test coverage for every method in crud.ts? And then I'll go ahead and add the context of crud.ts and I'll also add the context of crud test, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and ask that question there. And looks like we're missing a couple items, add many, modify and view, don't have test coverage, right? So this is really cool. You can add context and then ask questions against your context. So that's chat prompt with specific context. Last thing I wanna show off, you can do web search. What's something that we might want to do? Let's look at something like using the shell command with this cool new dollar sign syntax. We'll ask the cursor chat to fill in some information for us, right? So let's just ask some questions against this. I'm gonna open up a new chat here, and then I'm just gonna type, um, I'm just gonna paste this URL in. Now it can read this documentation, and I'll just say, how do I run bash commands from a bun script? And we'll just let that fire. You can see there, it's using the currently open file, but it's also gonna load in this web page. And you can see it's breaking down this dollar sign command. And you can see just like that, uh, this is probably coming right from the docs as well, right? Yeah, exactly. We have this hello world that's perfect. And then it's just walking us through how to await results from Bash. Um, you know, huge shout out to the Bun developers. This is so cool. I, I, I've been really enjoying using Bun. It's making JavaScript and TypeScript and the entire ecosystem so much easier to work with. So anyway, shout out Bun. This is an example of AI coding assistance web search. So that's a lot of the key features, a lot of the key value propositions from AI coding assistance. You can see there's a lot more going on here than there is with the um, AI autocompletes where essentially it's just really, really smart autocomplete. Again, it's not like we don't need that. It's not like it's not useful. It is just completely superseded by the functionality from AI coding assistance. Um, there's not really a lot to talk about with AI software engineers yet. This technology is still super gated and it's really immature. I have tried Open Devon. There is potential there, but it is way too early to recommend uh, AI software engineers to anyone right now. There's just too many costs associated. It's very unreliable. It takes too much time. So we're going to hold off on covering a software engineers, but really the promise is just one thing, right? It's end to end task prompting. You give it a problem, you give it code, you give it the tools and it does everything for you. This is really important. We're going to be covering on this channel. Subscribe if you're interested in seeing coverage on this, but um, it's just too soon. It's just too soon to really cover these tools. This has been a high level coverage of the key features specifically with AI coding assistance. That's where all the value is right now. And let me just go ahead and say a couple things about, you know, recommendations. You know, my recommendation is you want to have a AI Copilot running at all times, but then you want to be doing most of your work using an AI coding assistant. Most of coding is writing boilerplate, setting up types, setting up endpoints. It's a bunch of, you know, wrapper logic, a lot of surrounding code. And then you have the like 10%, the 5% of code where you need to really put your engineering hat on, you know, whip out the whiteboard, really get into the technicals of it. That's incredible, that's awesome. At the end of the day though, your AI coding assistant is gonna be able to hop in and complete even the very, very complex code that you have, that you're writing, that, you know, 10, 5%, as long as you write about it clearly, as long as you prompt it clearly, you're gonna be able to get all that value out. So I recommend that you always have an AI Copilot running and you're always using an AI coding assistant. There's just no argument against these tools being useful anymore. Maybe a year ago, you could have argued that. I disagree with that even still, but that that's irrelevant, right? With GPT-4.0, Cloud 3, Opus, there's just no excuse to not be using an AI coding assistant anymore. Um, you are just burning your own time. You're burning your own productivity. You don't wanna fall behind the AI coding train. So on the channel, we focus a lot on using the best tool for the job. Like I mentioned in the previous video, AI coding assistants are the best tool for writing code right now. So I recommend you jump in, start getting used to any one of these tools and just building on top of it because what comes next will be mind shattering. If you cannot handle the transition to AI co-pilots and AI coding assistants, when AI software engineers hit, it will just break your brain. It will make you feel like um, it's over. You've heard the whole narrative of coding jobs are going to disappear. There is some truth to that, frankly, 
but it's not going to disappear in the way you think it's going to disappear. It's engineers like myself. It's a lot of the engineers that watch the channel. We are using these tools. These AI coding tools won't replace you. We will, right? We are using these tools. We are getting supercharged. If you're not using these tools, we will replace you because we'll be two, three, four, five, ten 10 times more productive than you because we'll be using these tools. So, you know, join the journey, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Um, we've got a lot more AI coding content coming as well as agentic workflow, AI agent, and a lot of LLM powered automation tools, tricks, and guides coming. Like I mentioned, I'm working on a really, really cool resource that we can use to track a lot of the interesting things, a lot of the interesting topics that we cover on the channel in a concrete website. I'm really excited for that. When I'm not filming videos, planning, doing research, or doing my consulting work, I am spending all of my free time working on this incredible resource I'm building for you so that we can evolve as engineers and so that we can become agentic engineers. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the like, hit the sub, and I will see you in the next one.